Greetings, Inquisitor. I'm pleased that you found this holocron. Inside, you're going to find an analysis of Batsis, the rebel scum, and we're going to have a long discussion about Grand Arena and specifically the value of placing a strong defense. So, without further ado, let's get on over and see what Batsis has in his account. Number one in arena rank. Number one in fleet arena rank. So this person is in my guild. <laughs> Bats is a, he's a good guy. And uh, yeah, a strong player. Knows what he's doing. 1.4 in ships. 2 million in characters. There's not going to be a whole lot of advice to give him on how to play fleet or how to play squad. We've got relic level geo ships. We've got a bunch of uh, relic level empire ships and first order from getting SLKR. And then we've got a broad base of other ships down here with vulture droids, Millennium Falcons, Ray's Falcon, uh, bounty hunter ships, all kinds of stuff. So he didn't take the bounty hunter ships high enough to get the Millennium Falcon all the way. But that's okay. He's got a series of six capital ships down here, including the Malevolence that he's got to five stars. So he's got a lot of fleet up and running, ready to go. In terms of characters, lots of good stuff and characters here. You can see a host of Relic 7 stuff. Here we've got the SLKR. Take a quick look at mods. Good speed, 16 speed. Speed mod here, which is what you'd expect. Quite a lot of health substats on these mods. 21 speed on this. 22 speed over here. Obviously putting a lot of thought into going as fast as we can. So overall stats, 522 speed, 130,000 health, which is quite good. Uh, a lot of critical damage, but he does give up a little bit of offense. Um, still 10,000 isn't anything to laugh at. Good mods, well-built character, pretty fast. It's good all around. Darth Revan, maxed out. Good mods on this guy too, 22 speed down here. Looks like he went all the way and missed that speed an awful lot of times. <laughs> 19 speed there, speed arrow as you would expect. 27 speed, getting 25 speed or higher is really... Uh, uh, sacred thing and you can see a 27 and a 26 on this character and then a 24 down here in terms of total speed 341 speed blazing speed blistering fast on this Darth Revan <laughs> love it absolutely love it got some other fast characters here as well if we look at the Hux the Hux is at 282. Could be faster, but still, that's pretty darn good. Bastila is um, also over 300, 314. A little less potency than I usually like to see, but still, that's fine. 86% potency, and she gets the 50% from the stat bonus, so that's okay. So overall... Lots of good, fun characters here. Jedi Training Ray is at uh, Relic 5. Take a look at her stats real quick. 255 speed. Just a good blend of stats, good damage, good crit chance. So she's hitting pretty hard. All right, so overall we've got First Order, we've got Empire, we've got the Sith Empire, Padme Team, Geos, uh, most of the Geos are at Relic level. We got HK, we got a Vader down here. 241 speed, lots of crit damage, good potency, and then uh, some crit chance, and pretty decent damage. So he's doing a crit and crit damage build, 21 speed on there. So that's a well-built Vader. Just one Zeta on him. Um, that, If you're not going to use his leadership, that's fine. 
but uh, the second Zeta that you that I would recommend for Vader is the um, uh, No Escape. I found I, I waited a while before I put that on my Vader, and once I got it, I was really glad because pulling Geo Spy out of stealth, for example, is really good, and um, uh, other characters, Night Sisters, you know, whoever might be hiding in stealth, pulling them out during your Merciless Massacre is it's really. <laughs> It's really strong. It's better than it seems. It's worth the Zeta. All right. And then we've got a bunch of characters down here. Gear 11, Gear 12. We've got Thrawn, Night Sisters, Jedi Knight Revan, you know, Mother Talzin, a whole bunch of stuff. Zeta, uh, double Zetas on her and Asajj. So lots of, of different uh, teams and stuff going on here. If we look at the Resistance overall, he built... Uh, some good characters for, for Resistance. We've got the Veteran Smuggler already going. And I just want to point this out because I'm going to bring it up um, when I talk about the account that uh, we're already a bit on the way toward getting Galactic Legend Ray. So I think that's definitely a possibility for this account to, to look at Ray. He is missing. Uh, this page doesn't show Holdo or Rose Tico, so... He would have to, you know, do a long farm on those characters, but uh, not bad. Not bad overall. So, let's dig in and see what advice we might have. So, first and foremost, for anybody who hasn't seen this before, the concept for strategy, Grand Arena and Fleet Placement are the main priorities. We need big, solid defensive teams for Grand Arena. Same thing good offensive teams, and base of teams for placement and cleanup. Um, and at his level of Division Three of Grand Arena, we're looking for at least two of each team in that category. And then if there's any six-character team ideas, uh, the idea is to improve what he's already got, and we could be talking about stuff that's already underway. So what's going well? Well, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, that's going well. Uh, Darth Revan. A bunch of solid meta teams that he's got and that he's working on. Um, he's got broad fleet power. He's got uh, you know the strong finalizer fleet. He's got a malevolence fleet, and he's got the geo fleet with some empire ships to back it up. So the, the got plenty of plenty of power on fleet, and he's not too far off from where he needs to be for four fleets uh, when he hits division two. Um, strong Geonosians and uh, guild event teams, uh, you know, good good stuff in here for participation. And then here, Sector Five secured. <laughs> Sector Five is the in the comparison when you're looking at your stats versus your opponents for Grand Arena. And uh, Sector Five is where mods are, and he is in good shape on mods. He definitely has. Uh, put the right kinds of mods on his character, and he has good mods uh, to put there. So that's definitely going well. Opportunities, he is low on light side characters. The, the teams are very uh, biased toward dark side, and he knows that. I mean, Bats and I have talked, and he said pretty much straight up, I definitely need more light side characters. All right. Um, more Zetas are needed. I... When I was looking at his account, I didn't do a count and comparison against, you know, whatever standards. But it seemed like for as long as he's been playing um, that, that I would see a few more Zetas. So maybe he's got a bunch of Zetas in the bank um, that I don't know about. I know he's, you know, considering uh, getting General Skywalker as his next character. So maybe he's saving Zetas and just hasn't placed them. But... For anybody who wants to Zeta a little bit faster, for anybody who doesn't know, the Fleet Arena Store does have, you know, a Zeta material in there that you can buy. And if you can get good fleet placement, you can buy, you know, maybe five of those a week and uh, get an extra full Zeta every month out of that shop. And then, uh, you know, we talked offline, uh, you know, a couple times back and forth for, for different reasons. Uh, so I've got a little bit of insight into his account. And I'm definitely going to spend a long time talking about Grand Arena, Grand Arena defense, and what to do over there. So if you get, uh, if you don't want to hear all that stuff, then just, uh, you know, skip out after the account review. But uh, 
again, Grandarine is the focus for these account reviews, and we're going to spend a lot of time on that. So what would I do with characters and teams? I know that he's currently working on the Separatist droids, the Ewoks, to get his C-3PO uh, with the intent of getting General Skywalker. However, when we look into his account, his Malak is still not at seven stars, which means he's still using his Guild Event 1 tokens um, to buy up that Malak. And maybe he's close, maybe he's not, I don't know. But suffice to say, he certainly doesn't have enough saved up to also get General Skywalker to seven stars, or he would have his Malak at seven stars. So wherever he is, there's no extra guild event tokens to be had right now. Also, if you're building General Skywalker, then typically you also have to build the clones. So just suffice to say, if we think about the Separatist droids and the clones and Skywalker, you're, you're talking 10, 11 characters, uh, C-3PO as well, it's really uh, as many characters as you need to build a galactic legend to make that commitment to gas. So the issue that I see with that is once you make that commitment, you're still going to get a five-star character and still need to get him to, to seven stars. So for consideration, what I would like you to consider, for other people in your situation to consider... Um, Go for Ray instead. Now, people talk about Galactic Legend bloat, and I'm going to tell you right now, if you want to avoid Galactic Legend bloat, the bloat is mainly in the fleet. If you avoid all the fleet stuff, you will not be sad at all with the Galactic power that's added through characters. Those characters will be useful in some way, and they'll serve you just fine. Um, for my Galactic Legend, Kylo, when I looked, um, there's about, let's say, 350,000 Galactic uh, power in the characters and about 550 in the ships. So if you just skip the ships, it, it's a whole Grand Arena division or more that you don't have to worry about. Since he's already placing first in Fleet and Arena whenever he wants to, uh, the solution to me is simple. Just have the discipline to save up 3,750 gems per month every time the Radis event pops up. Buy three sets. You can buy 1,250 crystals for 10 shards of the Radis. Accumulate 30 shards for the Radis every time it comes up. And in five months, you'll have a five-star Radis. Unlock it. Leave it at level one. Don't ever have a Radis fleet. Don't ever build the Radis ship. Just pay for it. Unlock it, get your 17,000 galactic power in fleets, and leave the other 530,000 galactic power on the table. Don't even build those ships. Those gems that you spend to buy the Radis, you would spend more than that on refreshes, farming up all the, uh, all the ships that you need to, to do the fleet event itself. Buy the ship, skip that whole part. Part two, farm the long resistance characters, and while you're starting to work on Rose Tico and Amelin Holdo and Resistance Pilot and the characters that you have to get through farming, that'll give you time to work on your Jedi Knight Revan, get that to Relic level, get a Zeta on that Bindo, and make a solid team out of that. There's some other one-off characters, Han Solo, uh, CLS. There's some other things in your account that you could play around with getting Relics on or just save those relics until you get the resistance characters where they need to be and build that ray. And then once you've you know got that first set of characters going, finish out the rest and, and, and get, your, get your Galactic Legend ray. Um, I estimate that that would take between five and seven months for where your account, account's at now because you already have resistance characters at seven stars. You've already got the Jedi training ray at relic level. So you've got a head start uh, on this anyway. So I think in that time, what you could be doing is saving up all your guild event tokens um, for your General Skywalker. So then you get Ray, and pretty much as soon as you get Skywalker, he'll be at seven stars. So then instead of you know working on a seven star General Skywalker for a long time and then starting to work on a seven star Ray, or working on a Galactic Legend like Ray, you instead get Ray up front, 
And then as soon as you get Skywalker, he'll be ready to use. So I think, to me, that's a better order. It, it's something for you to consider. Can't tell you how to run your account, but that's the way I would do it. Just to get more solid galactic power in my account um, up front. All right. And if you do that, if you got the Ray, uh, I would say, you know, you're going to be, by the time you get to 4 million galactic power, you're going to be in a far stronger position than my main account was at 4 million galactic power. Um, so, so there's that. And just remember, General Skywalker is the best non-galactic legend character, and people say that for a reason, because every galactic legend character is better than a Skywalker. So the, the Ray is just, a, it's, a stronger, it's a stronger play. What would I do with ships? I know that you're doing the Vulture Droid and the Hyena Bomber to go along with your Malevolence. That's it. Just do what you're doing, get the malevolence up to seven stars, work on those ships, and nothing to add. Moving on. Mods. Sector 5 approved. <laughs> you got good mods, you know what you're doing, you have a good plan, obviously, so just keep executing that plan and nothing to add. All right. Now, we're going to get a lot into to Grand Arena Theory, and I might offend people with this first comment. In fact... I hope I offend some people with this first comment because I feel very strongly about it. I've heard a lot of people, even some people over on my Discord, and I've seen content creators, they play Grand Arena like Waterboy. You know, it's, it's all just run at the opponent and hope that it works, you know? And, and sometimes it will, and sometimes you're going to end up face down in the dirt, right? And, uh, you know, the idea is max banners, we got to get a full clear, save it all for the full clear. Oh, they've got a galactic legend, so I have to save my galactic legend on offense to get a full clear. But, man, if you stumble on that galactic legend versus galactic legend ba battle, you can't clean it up, you're just done. And there's no reason to play like that. There's no reason to, to, to just, you know, swing for the fences and then, you know, when it's all done, hope you get a nice big glass of, you know, tall glass of water, right? I'd rather win. So we're going to spend a long time today talking about using your Grand Arena defense to assure a victory. Now, I know that some people will come right out and say, well, you can't get Kyber. If you don't get full clears, if you don't get lots of banners, you can't get Kyber. Um, what's up on the screen now is my last Grand Arena battle. I won two zones. I won the battle. And um, I get Kyber. Uh, if, if I play out this season and I win like this, I might still drop two battles, maybe three battles throughout the season of Grand Arena and uh, not even complete all the feats. And, and, I will, and I'll get Kyber. So you don't need crazy offense full clears to win. You need to win to get Kyber. Uh, you get, uh, yeah, I, I, I think, and, and the fact that you get, you pick up Zetas as rewards, the Zetas are limited in this game. And if you win four rounds of Grand Arena and you get eight extra uh, Zeta pieces, that's, that's huge. That's, that's half of Zeta a month just by playing Grand Arena well instead of going Waterboy. All right. So in terms of Bat's account, where should he put Supreme Leader Kylo Ren? At Division 3 and Division 2, a lot of times you get put up against an opponent who also has one Galactic Legend, and it is very often Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. And it is very often the case that people just can't beat a Supreme Leader Kylo Ren on defense. I have him. I put him on defense. 95% of the time he holds if the opponent has uh, maybe a General Skywalker team and something to back it up to clean up, maybe I'll lose him. If he saves his Supreme Leader Kylo Ren on offense and wins that battle, maybe I'll lose him. But putting him on defense guarantees the best possible use. On the other hand, you could say, well, if they've got a a Sith Eternal Emperor or a Supreme Leader Kylo Ren or a big Darth Revan team that I don't think I can beat. Um, I'm going to take my SLKR on offense to make sure I can get through that. I, I, I don't like that. I, I don't like that idea. I'm, I much better like the idea 
And you see it here at the bottom, and I'll say it first, and I'll say it again when I'm done with this slide. Make them beat your best teams. Make them beat your best teams. If they stumble, if they disconnect, if they have a problem, if they misclick, if they don't understand how to play the matchup, uh, you benefit from that, right? If they know their stuff and they have clean gameplay and they have to save enough to beat it, fine. The amount of stuff that they spend on beating your uh, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. And if you look at the end game guys, they're putting together this Jedi team. And they're picking, you know, good Jedi from four different teams and putting them in one team to build SLKR. And they say, ha ha, I have a non-galactic legend uh, SLKR counter. If you're in Division Three and your opponent does that, he's just lost five teams. Because he doesn't have 17 more teams to back it up. He's got seven teams. And he's, he's just gutted five of them to beat your SLKR. And you win, right? So make them beat it. Don't play this mind game with yourself where you say, okay, well, they've got something good, so if they put their good character on D and I can't beat it, then, you know, uh, then, then I'll, you know, I won't get a full clear and I'll lose banners. But if they save it for O, then, you know, uh, uh, you know, you just mind game yourself right out of it, right? Put your Supreme Leader Kylo Ren on defense, period, done, and plan that if he does the same thing, your SLKR is going to hold, his SLKR is going to hold, and you're going to win on the other zones, okay? So that's how I recommend to play. So if he does put his SLKR on defense, fine. You just got to win on banners. And if I look at Bats' account, you have so much good stuff, you can three-man all of his teams, get tons of banners, and win on banners. You've got so much fleet power. You can put your very best fleet on defense take one of your other good fleets on offense, and, and bro, you still got two other good fleets to clean up. You're not going to lose that zone, right? So I think, I think defense is the way for this account to get a lot more Grand Arena wins. And I'll say it again. Make them beat your best teams. Make them beat it. So if you plan to hold on defense and you put more of your own stuff on defense, it makes it harder for them to get banners. Let's use an example where somebody only has six good teams, six really good teams. And I say, okay, we're going to put four of those really good teams on offense or defense, and I'm only going to save two good teams for offense. And you say, well, that's crazy. I'm not going to clear anything. Well, of course you will. You'll clear the two character uh, uh, character teams in front of ships, and you'll clear ships. You'll make a clean sweep of the, of the top, so to speak, okay? And then you, maybe you can beat his other defense in the bottom zone um, and, and kill one more character team, and, and that's your whole play. Why do you need 12 offensive teams? You, you only need to plan to play two anyway, right? And if he puts his strongest defense up top, then you play the win the bottom, you know? So if you're playing defensively, you don't need those teams on offense anyway because you're going to let him hold at some point and, and you're just going to um, just gonna do your thing yourself. Now, I have done this before and I have had my opponent go water boy on me and put a very light defense out, just put one or two really good teams on defense and just fill the rest in with garbage, Right? He's planning for me to do something similar and go all offense. And he opens up the defense and it's just a brick wall. If he stalls out on any one of those front teams, it doesn't matter how many teams he has behind it. Once SLKR holds, he holds against everything you've got. I don't care how many gear 12 characters you have. You're not beating him with gear 12. And, and that's all it takes. And I, I have won so many Grand Arena rounds against opponents that play like that. And then they put a light defense and instead of me having to have three or four good teams to beat their stuff, I just take in one character. Ky OG Kylo Ren alone, Darth Vader alone, Enfys Nest alone. Uh, if I have my Kylo Ren on mast, him and Sith Trooper with a two-man team and, and kill something. And, and I'll, I'll clear the whole board on the other side with 63 banner wins. And even if he gets a full clear on me, you know, he has to work for it, and I didn't, right? And that's the difference. 
And I understand that there's more banners to be had the more you clear on offense. And if you get a full clear, you get the bonus banners, and it's all, uh, you know, good stuff. But you don't have to clear to get Kyber. Winning gets you Kyber. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay. So let's set up Bats' account to be a defensive madman. He's got relic level geos. Let's put them in the top front along with the flex team. In the bottom, we're going to put that supreme leader Kylo Ren with another flex team. And in the back wall, we're not going to go cheap there either. He's got good night sisters. We're going to put them there. And then something like an old republic. Or if you feel like the old republic and the night sisters is too much to waste on a zone that people are never going to see because of the SLKR, put trash back there. Uh, there are some matchups where I feel like I do have to save more for offense. And I'll put, um, I've got a team now that's got, uh, you know, some Sith that I'm building for the Supreme uh, Sith Eternal Emperor. And I've got a Relic 6 Dooku. I just throw that on the back wall and say, okay, if they're out of teams by the time they get there, they won't be able to beat it. Um, you know, whatever. I don't care. And then I'll put my Phoenix back there or some trash team just to, as filler. So, you know, play with that if you want to save some of these other teams just in case. Then I would put uh, your home one and your geos as a defensive fleet. And most people say, well, home one is, a, uh, is for rebels, right? It's, don't put it with geos. I'm telling you guys. Uh, I have had so much success with home one with the geos. Um, and I put spy as a reinforcement. And it's, uh, you know, Sunfac and soldier out on the field along with a tank like you know, Hound's Tooth, or, you know, you could even put uh, any tank you want in there, any tank you want. When that spy comes in on defense, he'll light somebody up with a taunt, he'll play his assist ability, and remember, you don't want to play what's best for you as a player and say, well, put all three Geos on start, everybody will want to do that. Well, if you're actually actively playing it, you might want to do that, but the AI does not play it like you would play it. Right, the AI does not always do um, the, the right moves, but I'm telling you, if you bring in Spy as a reinforcement, and those other two Geos are still on the board, you kill a ship. You even up to and including Hound's Tooth, when you have Relic level Geos, and that Spy gets the assist all, and Soldier gets the assist, and it, you, you will tear a ship apart. Okay, so set it up where you've got two Geos and a tank. And then just two good reinforcements, the spy, and one other really good reinforcement. Don't fill in the two other reinforcement spots, again, because you don't want the AI to do stupid stuff and bring in the wrong ship. So you limit the AI's choices. It'll almost always bring in um, the other Geo. And I would say use your uh, Millennium Falcon. It gives everything um, the, the dodge when it comes in, uh, foresight. So... Just play that as your other and, and no other reinforcements. And put that on defense and, and again, make them beat it. That, that is a tough fleet. When, uh, when you get the assists from the Geos and Home 1 does the mass assist uh, area effect and you get more assists, it's so much damage like in the first you know, three rounds of the game that uh, you, can, you can get a hold with it. Or at least they're going to lose a ton of banners. And that leaves you your malevolence and a bunch of stuff for offense. All right, so what are we talking about with flex teams? I think you've got four teams that are good to flex that you can use either on offense or defense. For the first order, um, I, I'm aware that, that Bats typically plays as Supreme Leader Kylo Ren with, with some of the, let's say, leftover um, uh, first order so that he can save these other characters to make a other good first order team. That's fine. Fine if you want to do that. Um, my preference is to make the strongest team possible with, with uh, Supreme Leader and just let it hold. But uh, this is something you can do as well. So you can make a flex team out of that. And the reason it's a nice flex team, if you put it on defense, it'll be hard to beat. If you take it on offense, you can split it up, right? That Kylo Ren and Mast and, and maybe the Sith Trooper can make a team and Hux can lead another team and, and you can divide that up. Grievous, I think, is always going to be a defensive team for you. And I, I do like the idea of putting BB-8 with Grievous um, in that fifth slot just because it has the turn meter that people don't 
expect and 40% turn meter and all your guys go first is is a lot of banners stolen. So I would always put that on defense, but you can switch where it goes. Sometimes top, sometimes bottom. Don't let your opponent scout you and find the same thing every time. The Padme team is a flex for the same reason. You can put that on defense. It's hard to kill. You can take it on offense, divide it up into different teams, and spread those characters around. Darth Revan, same way. Uh, Darth Revan is typically you know, just straight up a defensive team, but with the way that you've got your character set up, you can take that Darth Revan, Bastila, HK, and three-man something. Uh, the Malak can solo something, or you put him with the Sith Empire Trooper. That Sith Empire Trooper can float over and help your uh, Vader, for example. So these teams, depending on how you're planning to play against your opponent, you pick two of those teams and put them on D, and you take the other two um, and save them for offense. So it looks like just a massive amount of defense, right? Look at all of those good teams on defense. Geo, Supreme Leader, uh, Night Sisters, uh, a good fleet, Grievous, Padmate, Revan, right? But look at all the stuff you've still got for offense. You can use the Darth Revan team and split it up. Padme can three-man and leave Grandmaster Yoda and Kenobi for another team that you can run with the uh, Jedi and then, you know, have a Jedi Knight Revan team that uses them. Uh, you got JTR that, that can come in with the um, veteran smuggler Han and, and kill a bunch of stuff. You've got uh, OG Kylo Solo. Man, I love running OG Kylo Solo against you know, quite a few of the, the back wall generic Gear 12 teams. He can just wreck people. And, and that still leaves you with Commander Luke Skywalker, Bounty Hunters, and another separatist, separatist teams that are all in that Gear 11, 12 that can do cleanup. And remember, if the opponent places a huge defense, none of that comes into play. If he goes weak on defense trying to, to, to just all-out offense, these, these characters are, are good enough to beat anything that he's got placed on the back wall, right? So, again, once you've placed a defense that's that good, he has to beat it, and he won't. So you just win on banners. Okay. Winning. Scenario one, they keep a massive offense, you get a full clear, um, they may still get stopped on your Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, but in full clear versus full clear, you've got so much better flexibility with small teams, single characters, a few characters getting wins. Scenario two, they balance it, you, you put a pretty good defense, they put a pretty balanced defense, and you run through their top zone killer ships and win on banners, right? Scenario three, they turtle up. Imagine that your opponent auto-deploys and just everything good is on the table. Um, you've still got plenty of offensive power to walk through their whole bottom zone and win. So I think setting it up this way, spending a good chunk of your resources on defense. And, and again, the reason I'm going through this specifically with Bats account, because I imagine there's probably other people out there that are in the same situation. And I imagine that so, at some point, you're in one of those battles where you've saved a bunch of stuff for offense, planning for a full clear, and you get stopped somewhere, and then you just have a bunch of teams that won't beat whatever stopped you. And it's, it's like those teams behind are wasted. So you still have teams left over, but you can't beat that Darth Revan with anything you've got. And, you know, you, you can look at that and say, well, if I'd placed those teams on defense, I'd be in the same spot I am now, except it'd be a heck of a lot harder for the opponent. All right, winning harder. Ray. If you go for Ray next, you replace Ray for Kylo on defense, and you have your Kylo for offense, then all I got to say, man, I hope I never see you in Grand Arena. Because <laughs> at that point, your roster would be incredible, your mods are rock solid. And um, I don't think I could beat you. So there we go. Big, long discussion on uh, Grand Arena tactics. Uh, I, hope, uh, I hope this has been helpful for some people. Perhaps it's things people already knew. But uh, like I said, for the way that I've seen people play against me and you know comments that I've heard from other people, I know that, that this is a different theory than a lot of people use. So take it under advisement. I can't guarantee it'll help you win. 
but I do, uh, I do advise that you mix things up and try new things and see how they work for you. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. Like this video if it helped you at all or if you found it interesting. Subscribe to my channel so you can watch more videos like this in the future. And uh, sign up on the Discord. Join us over there. Good crew of people over there. Uh, a lot of, lot of help to be had. A lot of advice. Uh, some fun, some humor. Uh, good group of people. I'm really enjoying uh, the community that we're building over there. So join us and uh, hope to see you all in the next video.